Hello friends, it's Reverend Rachel and I want to wish you a happy first week of Advent. We are still in this week of hope. Um, I am here with my own Advent candles at home um, and I've lit the first candle, the candle of hope, and I wanted to share with you a few further thoughts about this idea of Christian hope that we talked about on Sunday. I'm also here in front of one of the two Christmas trees that we put up this season. And uh, this one is in our family room and we've decorated it with the ornaments that the kids have made through the years. Uh, here's one of those ornaments that my son Graham made when he was three years old. It has a little picture of him on the back of a CD with lots of glitter and glue. And these ornaments are so precious to me because they remind me of uh, my kids' personalities and how they are growing into their own people. Um, they're becoming unique individuals with their own passions and interests and uh, definitely their own personalities. There's something that people say about the experience of being a parent that resonates for me, that when you are a parent, your heart lives outside of your body. And it's a recognition that uh, to have children is a really vulnerable experience because uh, these people that are entrusted to you, that you love so deeply, um, live out in the world. And there's a lot of things you can't control and there are fears that we have uh, for their safety, for their well-being, how the world will treat them how they will navigate their lives. It's also a point of pride that they are their own people and they are doing their own things. They, they live outside of you even though they are deeply, deeply connected. I heard a quote on Monday, which had I heard it earlier, uh, definitely would have made it into Sunday's sermon on hope, but uh, since I heard it on Monday, I thought this is a great thing to share with you during this midweek meditation. It's a quote that's attributed to St. Augustine of Hippo. He writes, Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are. And courage to see that they do not remain as they are. Anger and courage, the daughters of hope, born out of hope, deeply connected to and rooted in hope, part of the same family with this Christian hope that we have that God is yet at work in the world. But when it lives in us, sometimes the way that it looks out in the world is like anger and courage. And when I speak of anger, when Hippo writes, of, uh, Augustine writes of, of anger, he's not just talking about blind rage, but a sense of righteous indignation, anger at the way that things are, the injustices, the suffering of the world in relationship to the way that things could be or ought to be. That anger can move us into action. It can spur us to do the work of justice and reconciliation. The other daughter is courage. And courage requires that we stay awake, that we not become numb or complacent, that we do not shrink in the face of fear, but that we move out of that hope and we act, we do the work, we take on the things that make us angry and we work for change, we become that change. Anger and courage are what hope looks like out in the world. And of course, this Advent season is a season when we talk a lot about birth, birth stories and birth narratives. Not just the birth of Jesus, but also the birth of John the Baptist. And in the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of John the Baptist's 
parents, Elizabeth and Zechariah. They had longed for a child for many years, but were unable to conceive, and it was late in their life that an angel came to Zechariah in the temple. And of course, in the presence of a messenger of God, Zechariah's first reaction is fear. The angel says, do not be afraid. The angel tells Zechariah that he is going to be a father, that he's going to have a child, and that this child is going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. And Zechariah doesn't believe him. And so the angel silences Zechariah until after his son is born. But Zechariah has to have courage, courage to believe that this thing he has longed for for so long is finally coming to pass. Courage to believe that God is doing a miracle. Courage to go and tell everyone what God has done for him and the ways in which God is at work in the world, announcing God's kingdom. And when Elizabeth learns that she is going to become a mother, that she is going to have a child. She says, this is what the Lord has done for me. When God looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. You can hear in her words that grief, that shame, and probably anger too anger at having to wait so long, anger at the abuse that she has suffered because she could not bear a child, which was really so important for women to have any sort of status in that culture in that time. Disgrace, she endured disgrace. And yet God is about to change everything. I believe that it is okay for us, not just okay, but important for us to have anger and courage born out of hope. It's a way in which hope doesn't just become this wish, but it becomes a way that we live out our faith because we believe that God is doing a new thing. We have hope that the world as it is right now is not the way the world is always going to be. Sometimes it makes us angry that it takes so long. And sometimes we're really afraid. But when we lean into that hope, when we live out of that hope, when we have the courage to do what God is calling us to do, that's what hope looks like out in the world. I want to leave you today with uh, the words of Howard Thurman, the contemplative African-American writer and theologian um, who wrote this blessing. I will light at candles this Christmas. Candles of joy despite the sadness Candles of hope where despair keeps watch. Candles of courage where fear is ever present. Candles of peace for tempest-tossed days. Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love that inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all the year long. May you light your candles of hope this week. May you keep them trimmed and burning. May you let your hope loose in the world. May it be so.